Hello everybody, um, so it's teardown time again. Um, I wanted a bit of a break from uh, those Quantel paint boxes that I've been looking at recently, uh, but unfortunately we are still very firmly stuck in the 1980s. We have a uh, Sony uh, DXCM3A uh, video camera from the uh, mid 80s um, that we're gonna tear down today. Uh, be interesting to see inside it. So this is a, a broadcast quality camera. Um, it would have been used primarily for ENG use, which is electronic news gathering. So um, these were sort of specifically designed for being um, pretty portable units that you can go out and just do news reporting out um, wherever you are. Um, obviously completely different to the standard studio cameras that you get, which are on big um, movable mounts and uh, they have multiple lenses and everything's just so much um, better quality. But these are sort of small compact units that you can take and um, run around with, uh, chasing after the latest story. Now, one thing I did find interesting about this particular camera, it is tube based. So it uses three um, Satikon uh, video tubes. Uh, these are very, very similar to uh, Vidicon tubes. You might as well class them as the same thing. Um, they work in pretty much the same way. Now it's interesting given that this is mid eighties and it was in production um, for several years as well. Um, so, it's, uh, it's interesting to think that um, certainly consumer video cameras at the time were using um, CCDs um, and CMOS sensors, etc. Um, the broadcast stuff was still using video tubes. Um, I guess that's because the, uh, the CCDs at the time just couldn't compete um, with the, the old school technology. So it wasn't until the uh, 1990s, I guess, when uh, uh, things started to switch over properly to completely solid state, so that's kind of interesting. Now you'll also note that there is no tape mechanism in this, it is literally just a video camera um, and the lens. Uh, the recording was done on a separate um, videotape recorder which was connected by cable. Um, you might also notice as well that there is no microphone. Um, there is a mount for one on here but it's not, uh, not being fitted. Very often these weren't fitted um, because the audio was recorded um, using a boom mic or something like that. Um, but uh, there was an optional mount that you could place on here to actually install a, a shotgun mic on the side here. Right, so this is essentially made up of uh, about four sections. Uh, we have uh, the end section here. This is, seems to be primarily power supply and um, connections to the outside world. Uh, we have the main body of the unit here. Uh, we've got um, the viewfinder and the lens on the front. Um, everything is detachable, so the lens can be removed and replaced with um, different sizes. Um, the viewfinder is optional; you don't actually need to have one if you don't if you don't want it. Um, on the base, we have um, a large rubber support, so when it sits on your shoulder, it um, it doesn't cause you too much pain. Right, let's just uh, break this down into some smaller sections and we'll go through each one individually. Okay, the viewfinder on the top here, this is uh, all fully adjustable, so you can release this this locking nut here and this allows you to move the, uh, the viewfinder in and out to adjust to uh, your personal position and there is also height adjustment as well on this, this knob here just to adjust it. Um, and there is just one single connection through to the main body on this uh, multi-way um, DIN style connector. Um, the lens, um, that is actually a Tamron, a Tamron lens there. Um, uh, this particular one is um, 9 to 126 millimeter zoom lens. So um, on the on the body of the lens we have um, RET, I'm not quite sure what that is for. Uh, we have the zoom control, so this is a nice big analog style switch here to uh, to motorize the zoom. So this is uh, completely progressive, so the further you, harder you push down on it, the, um, the faster the zoom travels. We've got a manual and auto button here, that is for the iris control. Now as I said, the lens is detachable, it's just on a bayonet mount here, so quick release that and then the, uh, the lens comes comes completely off. And the uh, viewfinder as well can easily be removed. There's just a little locking thing here, so you can just do that and release the viewfinder. Right, let's have a look around the main body of the unit. Um, just on the end here, we have the main power switch, which is uh, 
nicely recessed so you can't accidentally switch it on or off. Uh, we've got the microphone input, um, a mic level control, earphone control, uh, socket, sorry, um, so you can plug in a pair of headphones and listen to what is on the microphone. Uh, we also have an intercom port here which allows uh, somebody to talk to the camera operator um, through their headset. Uh, we have a video output which is just a standard uh, BNC, uh, probably composite video output, and we have a Genlock input. So this allows you to sync this camera to um, uh, multiple cameras or the, the VTR etc. Um, right on the back we have uh, the uh, mounting shoe for the battery. Um, I don't have one of those, I'm afraid. Um, underneath here, we have the um, power input connector. A little bit further around, we have the main output to the VTR um, or CCU, which is camera control unit. Um, the camera control unit basically allows you to operate uh, more of the function, functions of the camera remotely. So uh, that's what that's for. Some switches here for the VTR control and VF video, that's the viewfinder. So you can have this selected on camera, um, auto or VTR. So if it was on VTR, it would allow you to see what, uh, what you might want to, it would allow you to see playing back off the videotape. And down in this corner, we have some of the um, operator controls. So we have preheat uh, and that turns on the, uh, the video tubes. Uh, we've got a gain control, we have uh, a white balance bars, uh, so that can be set to bars, auto, or 3200 Kelvin, and display change, so that changes the on-screen display that you can see through the uh, viewfinder. On the front, uh, we've got a couple of little uh, buttons here that are recessed. There is actually a built-in menu system on this, so it allows you to change a few settings. Uh, we have the output connector to the, um, the lens, so that would just uh, provide uh, power and stuff to the um, to the lens control and on the front here we've got um, auto center and auto white balance so these are sort of built-in features of the camera to allow you to align uh, align the picture properly and um, automatically correct the white balance. Right let's take the um, side panel off this and see what we've got on the inside. So easy access there's just two, um, was it three? Three screws just to hold this side panel on um, as I said before, this does appear to be magnesium, or some kind of magnesium alloy anyway. So in here we've got a load of analog goodness. Uh, we have uh, a board on the front here, and then looks like a load of analog stuff going on in there. Let's do the other side. So again, similar story with that panel. Nice um, rubbery, squishy side panel there to, uh, to rest against the side of your head when you're using it. Uh, we've got a couple of little access panels in here to access some controls which are inside. Um, this one here is a filter that just allows you to get access to this adjustment wheel on the inside which is for the white balance control. So um, just like the other side, lots of analog stuff. As, as you'd expect, this is an analog camera. So um, we can see one of the uh, Satikon tubes which will be mounted inside, inside there. Um, looks like there's another one that disappears up into part of the handle there and one that comes down here. Um, obvious things to note straight away, there's an hours counter just here. This uses a, one of those uh, mercury um, so there you can see the hours counter, small little mercury thing there. Um, looks like the uh, the little dot at, right on the end, um, just above the 10, looks like that's gone nearly all the way. So eh, many thousands of hours, I'm not gonna bother working it out. Now reading the um, service manual for this, it does state that the, um, the uh, Satikon tubes are um, deflected by um, electrostatic rather than magnetic. Um, so there will be some high voltage stuff to, to operate that and there will certainly be some high voltage in here to actually uh, provide the acceleration of the electron beam. Um, now this won't be thousands of volts, it's probably more likely to be hundreds, um, so it's not going to be too bad in here for high voltage. Uh, I'm not going to bother turning this on. I have actually tried to use this and there is actually a fault on it anyway, so um, I, I'm not going to bother showing you any, any of the output. Right, let's just take out some of these um, boards. These are all on a plug-in arrangement. 
So uh, lots of analogy stuff, and we've got a bit of transformer there. So maybe this is something to do with the high voltage. Uh, we've got a shielded can just there, which is uh, I should be able to pop the cover off that. We'll have a look at what is under there. Right, so this board is a PS15, which is uh, indicated as a power supply board by the service manual. Um, there's, it uh, takes 12 volts input and um, has quite a few different voltages output. Um, minus 5 volt, plus 5 volt, plus 160 volt, plus 30 volt, um, minus 70 volts, minus 31. Um, yeah, there's loads and loads and loads of uh, different voltages um, actually come out of this board. Yes, this looks more video or possibly um, deflection focusing control maybe. Uh, where is the number? Okay, this board is EN28. I managed to find the, uh, the number just down in there. Interestingly, this one is a mixture of through hole and surface mount on the other side, whereas the, uh, the power supply one was literally just through hole only. Um, so we've got this shielded can on top. Um, this is detailed as uh, the encoder board. So presumably this takes the uh, um, each of the separate videos and combines it into a um, composite video. PR61, um, this is um, both through hole and surface. Um, well, one thing we should do is actually have a look for date codes. Uh, on the connector we've got 84.8. Um, ah, 84, 84, yeah, so this is a 1984 camera, probably one of the first ones, maybe. That is uh, titled Process, uh, so it's obviously doing some processing the, the signal somewhere. Interesting, there just seem to be three separate channels on there. We've got like three lines of almost identical components, so presumably red, green, and blue. IE7, um, again, we've got through hole and surface mount on the other side, shielded section just there and this board is detailed as image enhancer right we can see back on down onto the back plane there there's a few components um, there's a fuse fuse up in there as well notable um, a few oddball components on it but mostly it's just a back plane so round on the other side we have uh, this board here which is uh, has monitor select on there and does that so that just plugs into the, onto the back plane. Um, and this board is detailed as auto uh, black, white, uh, and auto center gain control. So um, you can set your white and black points um, and adjust the position, um, the auto centering on the actual, uh, the actual image. And we've got gain control. So that's what that board does. Um, through hole and surface mount with a Hitachi device on there. Uh, this board is uh, DF20, which is the deflection board. So this will be uh, connected to each of the three um, SATICON tubes and will provide the deflection of the electron beam. Um, so presumably on here also there is uh, focusing control and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's probably all on the same board. Um, and that is why, of course, we've got all these lots of different adjustments. So there'll be um, everything will be triplicated. Uh, so there'll be adjustments for each of the red, green, and blue tubes. So that one is through hole only. There's no surface mount. It's all through hole. Right. I think I've got this figured out. Um, I just had to remove a load of stuff, but I think this comes off the back here, and this should slide out. Uh, so we've got some wires running down to a few boards. Let's just unplug these. There we are. There's the back of that off. No, I can't get those out of there, so that's easily solved. So that's the uh, the small backplane board. All right, let's take off a little bit more of the hardware. This is the uh, the handle and the mount for the viewfinder. Wow, it's amazing. Every th every single little cover and panel is uh, made out of a cast piece of uh, magnesium. And again, we've got more um, magnesium. And we're starting to get down to a bit of the optical block. Bit of a mess of wires. I think the best thing to do is actually just remove 
the uh, connectors from the the backs of the tubes. These are actually marked. That one's um, got a green sticker. That one's red. This one will be blue. Okay, there we have the uh, optical assembly. Uh, a very similar arrangement to what we saw in the um, the NAC HSV400 high-speed camera. Um, obviously, it used um, the same sort of principle. It had three um, Vidicon. Uh, well, in, in the case of that high-speed camera, it was uh, Plumicon tubes. Um, so, very, very similar arrangement in here. Obviously, it's a bit, um, it's a bit more compact. Um, in the front here, we have the, the actual lens mount. Um, then we have the uh, white balance adjustment wheel. So, you can just see in there, there's a three different uh, filters that you can move in front of the uh, the light path to um, compensate for the white balance. Um, that runs into this block here which will be a uh, dichroic prism um, which was the same in the, uh, the HSV400. Interestingly this is actually branded Canon um, in a Sony camera so that's kind of interesting and then each of the three colours come out to, uh, to these uh, three um, Saticon tubes. So if I attach the uh, the lens to it, you can see how uh, how this works. So the light comes in, uh, split by the uh, the prism, and then each of the separate primary colours is sent off to its own individual uh, Vidicon tube. Right, let's just have a quick look inside this um, block here, which was on the back of the camera. So this provided all the input and output connectors, etc. So this looks like it's some kind of power input distribution. Um, Got a small transformer there. Um, we've got uh, a small Omron relay. Yeah, there's not a huge amount in there. Just a few odd little bits and bobs. Connectors, plugs, switches. So there we have a very similar arrangement to what we saw in the that HSV 400. Now we can see the um, prism, so that was obviously the green one that I've just taken off. You can see through there. And with the, all three of those uh, tubes removed, you can see in there we have the red, green, and the blue. And uh, finally, on this uh, optical bit, there's uh, this one connection here to this device here. I think this might be a light source rather than some kind of detector. Uh, Vidicon and Saticon tubes require a certain level of light to actually start to operate. So um, I suspect this is a, a light biasing thing. There we go. It's just, <laughs> just come out and it is indeed a filament bulb. Okay, let's delve a little bit into the tube assembly. So we've got um, what is probably some kind of pre-amplifier on the front there. So this allows you to adjust the rotation of the tube inside the assembly and of as well the, um, the forwards and backwards, which would of course um, adjust the actual focus, the optical focus of the, uh, of the system. So where the light comes in, actually hits the uh, the front of the Vidicon tube that obviously has to be perfectly in line and of course you also have a focus for the electron beam as well so there's actually essentially two types of focus so you can see um, with the adjustment knobs removed there's two little slots in there on those screws that I've just taken out though there's two little lobes on there and they just allow this to adjust that way and adjust this way the label on here says um, Saticon, which is uh, Sony's own version of the Vidicon, and it's model number CT2332A. So right on the front here, we've got the first uh, preamplifier stage. And we have the main body of the preamplifier. And I can't really see how all of this actually uh, comes to pieces. Uh, I've got all the screws out, and it's possibly glued or something in place. Um, okay, I finally figured this out. It, 
<laughs> it doesn't go out out the back. It goes. Uh, it comes out the front. So. <laughs> Um, so there we have the um, Saticon tube um, and it's got this uh, metalised internal bit that we saw on the, uh, the HSV 400 tubes. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, smash this open or cut it open and we'll have a look on the inside. And in this section uh, which was uh, surrounding the tube uh, we have uh, a large coil in there that will be the electron beam focusing coil. Uh, provides the focus right down onto the end of the tube. So what I'm just doing here is cutting through uh, this plastic end cap. Um, I just want to get through to the sealing pip just so I can crack that off. Um, release the uh, the vacuum that's in this and then uh, I'll try uh, scoring around the, uh, around the perimeter and then give it a bit of a tap and see if it uh, splits apart. Right, what I decided to do instead of uh, literally breaking this pip off is I just used a, a diamond file and just filed through the, uh, the outer part of it. So that's just broken the seal there, so there's no vacuum left in this now. So I'm just going to use this again and cut round and uh, break the base off and then hopefully it will just slide out. I don't suppose it's particularly long in here, it probably only comes up to about here. Um, the rest will probably just um, fresh air now. You might have noticed I've put black tape around this as well, so if the glass does break, then it keeps it all intact. So here we can see um, the Saticon tube uh, in pieces. Um, I was correct about this not going very far into the tube. Um, it is just really an electron gun, really. Um, down in the base of the tube you can see the actual imaging surface which is that uh, sort of gold coppery coloured surface down in there. Uh, that is um, selenium, arsenic and terillium. So I'm not really going to muck around with that too much. I might give it a quick poke. <laughs> yeah, just poked, through, poked a hole through it so it's a very, very fine surface down in there. Okay, so here we've got the actual electron gun. Um, there's a number of connections on the outside of here which um, pushed onto the inside of the tube. Um, and then just inside there, that small little white area, that is the actual heater. Um, and then of course the cathode would be just on the outside of that. Um, and then the, um, as the electrons boil off that, they come down here. And I would imagine there's some acceleration in, in here, probably not a huge amount. Um, and then the electrons come out of this tube here. And just down in there you should be able to see a very, very small little hole where the actual electrons come out of. Now one thing I had expected to see actually on this part of the um, tube was the uh, deflection plates for the horizontal and vertical deflection. So that it's electrostatic in this, which means that um, all you have to do is build a charge up and it uh, deflects the electron beam away. So normally you'd see uh, a vertical one, horizontal, um, and those give you the deflection, but they are not here. I think what is actually happening, the def uh, horizontal and vertical deflection is actually these um, metallized sections in here. Interestingly, there is actually four separate um, connections, um, so they could quite easily be um, the, the actual horizontal and vertical deflection in this part here, which is probably logical because um, it runs up the entire length of the tube. Okay, uh, the last two things to look at are the uh, lens. Now I'm not actually gonna take the lens apart because they're normally pretty difficult to get apart anyway. Um, there's not really that much interesting there, but I will take this um, control box unit thing apart because that just uh, quite easily detaches from the actual lens. And then we will have a look at this, the viewfinder. Removed this before uh, because when I first picked this camera up, all of the controls on this were completely frozen. So um, I've actually, I actually freed those up um, to actually see if the camera works. But unfortunately, there is actually a fault with the uh, the electronics, so it's not really worth doing anything. Um, now I'm actually going to save this lens because uh, it does actually mate up quite nicely to, uh, to all this part. So I think I might actually save the lens. 
So here we can see that uh, the actual lens assembly is just a, a plain lens um, and then the, the motorised controls um, is just operated from this box which just um, screws onto the side of it. Um, there's a couple of micro switches on there which make contact with um, two position sensors on here and that is just for the iris control. And you can probably see that this is actually pretty crusty. It's obviously been stored in a bit of a damp environment and um, the magnesium and the aluminium has started to oxidise um, and go rather, rather crusty. So two of these screws I've just rounded off because um, they're so, the whole thing's so corroded so I'm just going to have to drill those out. Pesky little thing doesn't want to come apart. Half the wires are soldered and half are on connectors. Okay, there's a small control board uh, with a load of JRC components. They're probably up amps or something, maybe. Little ceramic hybrid doohickeys there. I'm not sure what that uh, is needed for. Some unpopulated um, pads there as well. So inside here we have a uh, couple of motor drives. Got a motor down just down in there and another one there and what looks to be like little um, planetary gearboxes which run through um, each motor has two drive belts on it running to the uh, the wheels and then they just yeah that's a planetary gearbox in there so that's just a reduction Reduction gearbox which runs through and drives the small cogs here which interface with the actual camera. A switch um, just there for man or sir, that will be manual or servo, so that will be for the zoom control. Um, so you've got the analog motorized zoom control just there um, or you can switch that to uh, into manual and then just operate the uh, the lens manually okay next bit up is the viewfinder um, so this is a, is a CRT based viewfinder so there's going to be a small CRT in here high voltage generation um, stuff like that so uh, let's get this open I like the way it says do not remove screws I've just got this out of here. We've got um, a few more magnesium magnesium parts. So this is how it was arranged inside the uh, inside the box. Um, small board there with not a huge amount on it. And we do have some surface mount stuff on that board. So this board here is likely doing the uh, um, the high voltage for the acceleration and the vertical and horizontal deflection, which um, being a CRT is normally magnetic. So you can just see the coils around there, around the uh, CRT tube. So we have the front of the CRT which just sat in in there and uh, reflected off that mirror 
We've got a uh, couple of indicators up there, uh, BAT and REC um, tally. Um, obviously this is printed backwards because of course it would be displayed in the mirror. Um, so REC tally is literally the, the light that comes on to tell you you're recording. Um, and battery is a low battery indicator. So we've got a nice little um, CRT tube there. Um, we've got the two LEDs for the indicator lights. This is a, a rubber mount just there. Um, that should come off if I... So there we have a better view of the CRT. Uh, we've got the anode connection up at the front there. Um, the deflection coils um, which are connected to here. And a nice little black and white Hitachi uh, CRT. There we go, it's quite a cute little tube that one. But of course that is not the smallest they go. Um, I took apart a uh, a 1990s vintage cam, uh, consumer camcorder and that was the uh, the CRT that was in one of those viewfinders so it's pretty small compared to uh, compared to that one uh, and then the smallest one I've ever seen is this little one um, which came out of a, um, a slightly more expensive uh, consumer camera little square CRT Right, uh, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking inside this uh, 1980s vintage broadcast quality video camera. If you liked it, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments, please leave those in the comments section. I'd be delighted to see any, com any comments you've got. So thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.